welcome back to the channel everybody i am mick alphany all right so let's begin here on uh, uh dot today we have an article here actually before we begin i want to give a big shout out to pay me an xrp <laughs> pay me our xrp has been on fire lately that's number one Number two, I want to give a shout out to someone else, but I don't want to mention their name directly because I don't know if they want their information out there. I'm just going to call this individual the master of the dark Hado. Hadouken! You get what I'm saying? Shout out to the master of the dark Hado. Now, let's get on to this here. This article is titled, Ripple Lawsuit, Jeremy Hogan Speaks on Expectations Regarding Summary Judgment Briefings. Let's uh let's uh scroll down the page here and see what see what's going on here. There's always something happening with XRP and Ripple. The, you know, the fact that anyone believes at this point that you're going to stop XRP is ridiculous. The SEC has to know their back is against the wall. They have to know that. We have we, we're working with the Fed. It doesn't matter to what capacity. We have a great relationship with the federal government. Do you think they're not going to pull strings for us? They are. We just have a few rogue uh, 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 entities within the government. And keep in mind, the governments are not all on one page. They battle each other all the time. You can see that in their politics. They constantly are constantly are at each other's, uh, each other's throats. And that's a good thing for us, right? We have the Fed. Now, also, I want to just kind of point out how BlackRock is creeping into crypto. They have their hands in a couple of projects. So you have the, um, their back, BlackRock is is backing Coinbase, correct, right? Okay, then you have BlackRock also uh, uh, trying to put forth this exchange traded fund, ETF, Bitcoin ETF. Do you think BlackRock's not gonna get involved with one of the biggest, possibly, uh, I'm gonna say that because I think Quant could go pretty freaking high. But let's keep XRP up there also. Do you think BlackRock's not gonna wanna have its hands in some of the biggest money makers of all time? Of all time. I predict in the future BlackRock will get involved with XRP. Just a prediction. I could be completely wrong, but th they're creeping in slowly. But it, no, they all do this. They come in in a mainstream way. Coinbase, Bitcoin, ETF, exchange traded fund. That's just where it begins. It's not where it ends. We have all the backing in the world. We're not going to lose this. But anyway, this is my humble opinion. Things could go. Who knows how things you know, you, you have some unpredictable um, circumstances in life. Things could happen. But. From what I see, there's no way we're losing, losing this. So let's just take a little, little look here. It says expectations in the ongoing Ripple litigation are still in place as the much anticipated start of the summary judgment briefings in September approaches. UDOT today reported that motions for summary judgment are expected to be submitted by September 13th. So we have another date right there. XRP friendly attorney Jeremy Hogan is not left without expectations either, as he took to Twitter to highlight one key thing he hopes to see in the summary judgment briefings. Quote, the extent uh, Ripple makes the comparison between XRP and ETH. Hogan wrote, quote, one thing I'm interested to see soon in the summary judgment briefings is to what extent Ripple makes the comparison between XRP and ETH. All right. So this should be interesting and it should be some good information coming out very soon. Uh, it says observers believe that the lawsuit could all come down to the speech made by the former SEC official four years ago. Talking about uh, talking about him, and of course. And let me tell you something <laughs> after this, there's going to be if we uh, bring home the victory in this case, there's going to be so much FOMO from large industries and such that not just retail, large business industries. I'm going to say this again. I don't believe there's enough XRP. This is why you have so many different bank coins. <laughs> you know, they sort of come together. They're one system. People in the future, in my humble opinion, will only be able to buy fractionalized piece, uh, uh, pieces of XRP. That's it. Pieces of quant. Pieces of XLM. If everything goes according to a plan. Pieces of Algorand. Algorand's going to dominate. You can see what's going on. Read the IMF documents. Bank of International Settlements documents. They have been exploding with documents lately. I can only post so much. And even I've been posting a lot. That's not even half of what they've been releasing. The age of information, not age of information, my apologies. The season of information is upon us. They're telling. Which, by the way, I put out that members only video. Make sure you go check that out. That's two. Right? I did one like a day ago. Then one this, uh, I just put out, uh, I think last night or this morning. One, one of the two. And it's called. 
They're telling. You want to watch that one. Trust me on this. And they are. They're literally telling the people of the world, hey, this is going to happen. Get in now. It's going to happen. The people are so, they don't believe. They don't want to. They have been conditioned to believe that there is no balance in the world. There's always a balance in the world. They can't deny it. It's a law. There is a balance. So there's a, even if the even if there's an imbalance, still there's a tiny sliver, sliver of 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 hope, an open doorway where the people can get into these different things. Jeff Bezos was was running books back and forth in his van out of his garage. He wasn't supposed to. He wasn't chosen. The industries didn't want him in there. They tried everything to get him out of there. Remember that? The Amazon wars, everybody hated Amazon. All these businesses hated Amazon, but he kept pushing. He knew there was a small doorway and he pushed his way through. Ah, ah, I'm in now. And he made it. Apple with the iPhone. All those other big phone companies didn't want Apple in there. They tried everything to get Apple out of there. Tried to finish them. But Apple knew, you know, it was a little bit of a doorway. It's a little bit different than Jeff Bezos story, of course, but look at all of these different so-called disruptive technologies. When they say disruptive, they're telling you there's this little doorway that only the strong can make it through. The strong, the chosen, however you want to put that. We are those ones now. Now, there's no guarantees, of course. And this is not financial advice, but personally, I'm forcing my way through the door. We don't get another shot at this. This is it. Let's continue on here. So we have uh, there was a, a, a tweet here from from XRPL Labs. Right. And this is on XRPL.org. And it's about the use cases of XRP and how many different use cases that they have. Like I said before, this lends to my thoughts that there's not going to be enough XRP to go around. P listen, between the banks buying up giant chunks of XRP that they have to hold. According to Ripple.com's own documents, they have to hold XRP. They're not going to hold a tiny bit because the higher the price of XRP, the, the lower the transaction fees. And there's a whole other lot of whole, a whole lot of other benefits. Also, not, not to only to mention that, but they can take control of what happens over the price of that supply. Um, which the Bank of International Settlements pointed out was one of the uh, you know, fail points of DeFi was the fact that whoever controls the most of that liquidity pool, which obviously if you control the liquidity pool is how much of that particular asset you own, you control it. It becomes sort of centralized. So anybody can come in and buy everything up and control that asset and the movement of that asset. It's the same thing I said with XLM. You don't need Stellar Foundation to really do too much. To be quite honest, you got like, let's just take the examples of IBM, Lightnet. They're just the beginners. There's ones that were developing on the Stellar blockchain with Stellar Protocol. We don't even know about. Anybody can come in and buy up as much Stellar as they want. It's 10 cents per Stellar, Stellar right now. Who knows what's going to be in the future? But they could buy all of that up. And, and judging by the interest from states and the federal government in Stellar, uh, also the oldest bank in Europe and other banks, the interest in Stellar, you think they're just going to leave it there? No, they could buy all of that up. And I think that they, I think a lot of uh, a lot of these protocols, they will be bought up. I do. I believe that. And they will be rare and hard to acquire. But let's look at some of these use cases. Micropayments, cryptocurrency wallets, exchanges, stable coins. This is from XRPL.org. Stable coins, NFTs, which is going to be huge. DeFi, CBDCs, throw on demand liquidity in there. All. There's so many different ways they're going to be using the XRPL. It's unbelievable. That price is going to skyrocket higher than most will anticipate, believe. Some people are delusional. They, they don't want to believe until it's the last second. They'll, they'll buy at a high. They'll buy it for an extremely high price and lament later that they didn't get it at a low price. It's, it's how it always happens. People didn't care about Bitcoin when it was 10 bucks. 15 bucks. Whatever low price it was, they didn't care. Ethereum, same thing. When it gets high, then all the people take notice. Oh, it's serious now. And they buy it at these expensive prices. Quant is going to be one of those that goes higher than most. Look at the circulating supply and the utility. Utility is second to none. None. It can do everything everyone else can. But it has a lower circulating supply. Quant's going to explode. It's going to be one of those Bitcoin-like coins, in my humble opinion. Now, it will take time. 
But you can't deny that when you read the read the documents, read the documents. LAC chain bringing banks to the table. See a partners, see a chain bringing hundreds of banks to the table. And when the banks get involved, they take things very seriously because they want to maintain that power. They see that the the current system is reeling, is hurt. And they don't want to go down with it. They want to survive. So when they jump in, they're going to make a big splash. Ah, so all of the <laughs> all of these use cases for for the XRP, XRPL and attend and attend account requirement. They should have kept that at 20. Yep, I'm cold hearted like that. They should have kept that at 20. But they brought it down to 10, 10, 10 XRP requirement to have an account or wallet, whatever that is. Just imagine when that price goes up, it's designed like that for a reason. And most of the people that will get in later don't even know that. They don't know that. They hear about XRP right now. They didn't get in and they think to themselves, I'll get in later. Not, re not understanding when that price starts going up, there's a 10 XRP requirement. You can't just get one. Random uh, thought here I'm going to share with everybody. And I don't know what the heck the world is talking about. The Samaritan movie with Stallone was great. I like it. That was a good movie, man. Stallone was still doing his thing. I thought the story was good. Um, it was an old, old school throwback type of movie, in my opinion. Like if you grew up in the 90s and early 2000s and such, that you'll be familiar with those types of movies. It's just a fun action movie with a, a good, st I want to say good story. It's like a heartfelt story about this kid and his struggles, uh, you know, good versus evil story. It's very simple. That's how Stallone likes to do it. And that's what he's one of the best at. Matter of fact, I think Stallone, Stallone, in my opinion, I had him number two for a long time to Schwarzenegger right below Stallone, uh, Wesley Snipes, which they, if you didn't watch Demolition Man, <laughs> you need to watch Demolition Man. That was a great movie. That was a great movie. Not only that, if you look at how society is going today, it's very Demolition Man like, isn't it? <laughs> but anyway, I think Stallone is my number one action hero of all time right now over over Schwarzenegger, over uh, Snipes and over Van Damme. But anyway, we'll get to that another time. Uh, so <laughs> then we have another article here. Actually, this was a retweet from from uh, Ripple or XRP Labs, and it's about the, the Columbia land registrations here. Uh, we saw this before, but there's a reason that they retweet these things. So there was a whole lot of um, articles written and videos made recently because Columbia, I believe they just had a, uh, a in, an election. So, you know, the, the, their political regimes have changed. I believe that's what was going on. And a lot of people believe that this you know project will come to a halt. And so judging by the fact that, um, you know, Ripple and XRP Labs just retweeted this, I think it was today or yesterday, I would assume this means it's still, this project is still a go. Now, the, the article was titled, First Version of Columbia's Land Registry Debuts on XRPL. This is not what's important in, in my opinion, even though this is great. This first sentence tells me a lot. The initiative aims to register more than 100,000 adjudications. 100,000 in short term. So here, here's why. These are good things that happen, uh, but these initiatory things. But in my opinion, I look at the big picture also. Um, this is just where they're starting. So this tells me that they're, they're able to do this with other other countries and they are working on deals with other countries right now. You never go in and just try to make one deal. Who does that? No, you go in and you go in trying to establish multiple deals at one time sort of a work smarter, not harder type of thing. And that doesn't always apply, but in these circumstances it does. So if they can land those others and they already have this as a, as a, as a, a use case, they already have this as proof of, of the idea, proof that, uh, that they can actually execute, then it makes it easier to land those other deals. Now those other deals is where it's important because we're only going to expand from here. So if, if they're just starting in the short term with 100,000 adjudications for one country, imagine all these other countries utilizing the XRPL for land registry and things of that nature, moving the value around of land, moving the deeds. So they have the certificate of adjudication right there for you. So it's already they're ready to go. So this is a great thing, but it's just where they're starting. We keep an eye on it. We see what's going to happen with the, the politics in Colombia. Hopefully everything goes goes uh, well down there. There's a lot of good people down there. 
And um, I think this is going to be big. But as you see, Ripple and the XRPL is poised to dominate in every possible way. Lamb registries, uh, art NFTs, the advertising has been very good. CBDCs, national digital currencies, on-demand liquidity. Uh, they even have, uh, you know, their, their feet in trade finance. So there's a whole lot going on. Let's continue on here. So now we're going to move on uh, to a little bit of uh, quick HBAR Hedera news. This is from the HBAR Foundation. And it goes as such. We're excited to announce that LG Electronics has launched at LG Art Lab on Hedera. The hashtag NFT platform integrated into LG's smart TVs. You're going to have Hedera HBAR or, uh, and, and uh, products built on it on people's TVs. Do you see where this is going? Do you think that the, the governing council and their connections didn't have anything to do with this? HBAR will go far. Rhymes make it easy to remember things, doesn't it? Yes, it does. HBAR will go far. So let me finish this little uh, tidbit here. It says, the NFT platform integrated into LG smart TVs where user, users can discover and buy, sell, and trade hashtag Hedera NFTs right through their TV. That's mind blowing. We're gonna take a lot of money off of retail's hands. We are. It says, it's time for the HBAR ecosystem to take the world stage. There you have it. I respect the HBAR uh, Foundation. I respect Hedera. Uh, they have kept their word. I respect that. I like people who keep their word. Uh, and they said at the beginning of this year, they're going to do more advertising and do more pushing of HBAR and Hedera than they ever have before. And they have. They've delivered. That matters when you're dealing with a company and you want to make a, a, a profit off of the asset that they're utilizing. Right. So this is very, very good. Uh, now, let's move on here. XDC, every time they <laughs> they tweet something or make an announcement, it's something major. Unbelievable. I love XDC. XDC is going to explode. Listen, let me say something. I sound like Mike Tyson. I was watching some Mike Tyson uh, <laughs> interview, and every time he gets serious, he says, hey, listen. <laughs> he tells you when, when, when Mike says, listen, he's about to get serious. But anyway, listen. <laughs> Every time XDC does something is major. So here they have a tweet here. It says easy to use hashtag ISO 20022 demo. See how blockchain and at Impel official are ahead of the curve. So now there you have it. Hi, XRP Sparky 910011. This is the subtweet. Have you tried our self paced ISO demo? They have a demo for ISO 20022 now. Like I said, my people brought ISO to me last year. This is not something that I was looking into deeply. People like I am Sule and such brought ISO to me. Um, these subscribers on this channel are the best you will ever come across. I'm telling you now, um, the tweets that they release, the information that they come by, they are researchers like myself. They do a tremendously good job. So, ISO is coming, the age of ISO is coming and it is significant. It is significant and uh, it's going to be very interesting to see once all of this rolls out, what happens. Um, I don't expect fireworks right away in my humble opinion. I think everything happens in degrees. I say that all the time because I believe that that's the truth of reality. Everything in degrees. Uh, so it will take some time, but this is definitely a step forward and it's going to be very, very um, impactful on the future and the future of those prices. Um, especially when it comes to regulatory clarity and being compliant, right? So there's only going to be a few uh, cryptos left once regula regu regulatory clarity is given. The bank coins will be the last one standing because they meet all requirements. So this is what a lot of uh, what they've been presenting to us this year is about. We're green. Check off that box. We're ISO um, compliant, however you want to put it. People, they like to get, uh, you know, riled up over... Uh, linguistics and the lexicons that you use and the language that you use. Man, I like to skip all of that superficiality. Their check is a box that they need to check off. Green, ISO. Let's get down to the essentials and get to the money, right? We're fast, we're scalable, we're secure. Boxes getting checked off so that the banks have nothing standing in their way when they wanna use these, these particular assets, these particular protocol, this technology. 
We don't want anything standing in our way, and this is very good. So then we have another, another uh, 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 tweet here from XDC Foundation. It says, XDC Foundation is proud to work with at DC United to bring United per, per X to the fans. Elevate your experience with seat upgrades, sweepstakes, and more. So they're in deep with DC United. This is huge. And they've been expanded. I remember they made this announcement a while ago. As you see, XTC is not lazy. They're constantly expanding their relationships. They're constantly improving their blockchain, which I believe has military grade security now. XTC is, is one of the absolute best holes, in my opinion, is going to explode. Trade finance, we're talking trillions of dollars. They're not going to stop there. They're going to expand just like all of the other uh, distributed ledger technology companies. They're going to expand from here. They're only going to grow. So, and this is very, very good because look at this right here. You have United per X advertisement, and this is powered by XDC network. People are going to look into that. People see advertisements. I, I used to see them all the time. And they go right on their phone and search up that advertisement. They're going to search for XDC. This is great advertisement. And that means the possibility of more money for you and I. And, all, and money is always a good. We want all of that money. So now let's end off with a little bit of... Um, Quant News, because Quant has been doing a great job. They also are another company that works hard. I want and need companies that work hard, that are promoting the protocol that I hold. And they're constantly updating Overledger. They're making sure it's ready for those banks. Overledger 2.2.14 is an engineering release. Scroll down here, read this little tidbit. It says, this release introduces technical changes to improve future functionality. This is an engineering release of Overledger that adds technical changes within the platform to enhance security and scalability. They're going to need it. They need it. Look at how expansive Quant has, has become in such a short time. They are dominating in Latin America, and that's only going to continue. It's only going to, to grow. They're dominating in Europe. And I think they're going to dominate in a lot more places in the future and many more places. Uh, let me rephrase that many more places in the future. So they're going to need great security. They already were very, very secure. Uh, they're going to need great, greater scalability when they were already very, very, uh, very scalable. Also, keep in, in mind that they're blockchain or DLT agnostic. Quant can move wherever it pleases. They are, they're only on Ethereum right now uh, because Ethereum is one of the biggest out there right now. It's one of the most popular out there right now. But they can move it anywhere that they want. They're not stuck there. And when you do uh, transactions via Quant, you, you pay in Quant. You don't pay in Ethereum. You pay them high ETH, ETH fees. As far as what I know, maybe I could be wrong on that. Maybe there's some differences here and there. I don't know. But that's what I've seen. All right. So let's read this little tidbit here. It says, there are no new APIs features or modifications to the user experience in this version. It also supports changes for future releases, including improvements to internal con configuration mechanisms. Second bullet point, additional field level validations for Ethereum and Hyperledger fabric transactions. Third bullet point, expansion of DLT event monitoring and subscription functionality for QRC 721 tokens. So there you have it. And they're going heavy with these NFTs. They want their NFTs to be the standard. They've said it and they believe they have the way. Not, not only that, like Quant is doing so much. They're trying to get out at the forefront and be the, become the standard in, of NFTs. And I also believe based upon all of the documents they've released on their idea of commercial stable coins, they want to take that also. We'll see what happens in the future, but it's going to get very interesting. And in, in, uh, I believe Quant is going to explode. Probably <laughs> it can explode the highest out of all the bank coins, in my opinion. Look at the circulating supply. Look at what look at the price where Bitcoin is now. Bitcoin is just store of value. That's it. Quant's use case goes far beyond and it has a lower circulating supply. It's better in every possible way. You think that price can go up there? Who knows how long it's going to take? I don't. I'm not saying I could put a, a time stamp on that. But I do know it's not going to stay at one hundred dollars. It's not. It's not. It's going much, much higher, in my humble opinion. So, I was—I have another article here, but we're not going to make it to this one today. Maybe we'll cover it tomorrow. Um, so, to the master of the dark hado, I want to say this, right? <laughs> master of dark hado. I'm going to give you uh, some of my top Street Fighter uh, characters. 
Number one, I, I played with him the most, was Ken. Ken is number one. Ryu. We always said Ryu. We never said Ryu growing up. We always said Ryu. Ryu is number two. Guile is number three. That sonic boom was vicious when I was younger. Who could I put at number four? I love Chun-Li. Should we put Chun-Li? Chun or Honda, E-Honda. You know what? I'm going to go with E-Honda because I played with E-Honda so much when I was younger. When you used to go to arcades and put a quarter in, I don't know if people remember that. How many people from my generation are, are on this uh, page? Do you remember going to, you could go to a supermarket, movie theaters, everywhere. They had arcade games, right? And you would put like a little quarter in. And let me tell you something. Unless you lived at the arcade, you needed to pick a character that you could just pretty much mash the buttons. And, and he would put a whooping on the other character, right? So in Street Fighter, that was E-Honda. You could just press the buttons. And, go, oh, 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 and you would mess somebody up pretty bad, right? <laughs> It, it, there's always one character like that in Soul Calibur. It was Maxi, Maxi with the with the uh, with the nunchucks, right? You could just press the press, just smash the buttons, and and Maxi would just whoop up on somebody. Now, in uh, Tekken, let's not leave Tekken out. Listen, everybody knows Eddie Gordo. You could press all the buttons, and Eddie Gordo would be whooping up on somebody and perform an immaculate com combination, even though you didn't know what the heck you were doing. Uh, e Honda was like that, so let me throw E Honda in at the end. So now that you have all that information. <laughs> what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, can't forget the slapping of the table. That's, that's crucial. It gets the energy up. It gets the energy flowing. It's important. Let's get to the money.